In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, sometimes comedy. Worldwide, worldwide. We answer questions asked by listeners like you, um, and we also do an introductory portion where we talk about our lives, uh, current events, we mention our sponsors. So let me give you a rundown of this whole episode. So in the beginning, the intro portion, which is 45 minutes long, we start out by talking about books and family dinner time. We're all fathers. We all value being fathers. So, so we were sharing stories about things we like to do with our kids before bed. Then we talked about the movie Parasite. That movie was awesome, but- yeah, uh, took a hard left turn. It gets dark real fast. It's kind of hard, a hard, dark one. Um, then we talk about how soup, the demand for soup is up 140%. So, no soup for you. So Campbell's making more money right now with everything that's going on. We talk about the explosion in sales of pools and trampol trampolines, probably because people are at home more. Uh, we talk about how the NBA is returning. Uh, we're going to start seeing some games there with the basket sport game. Yay, more sports, right? <laughs> right, Sal? There, there you go. Um, I talked about how easily it is to digest Organifi's plant protein. I love their protein. I've, I have a sensitive gut. Protein powders tend to bother it. Organifi's protein does not. Easy to digest. It's dairy-free. There's enzymes added to help with digestion. Of course, it's all organic. Uh, the company Organifi only has organic products. If you want to use the Mind Pump discount for any Organifi products or supplements, go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com and use the code, oh, excuse me, forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Um, then Justin brought up a scientific study. This was fascinating. Yes, I did. Has to do with farts. Uh, oh, yeah. I talked about how somebody put their dead grandmother in a freezer for 15 years. Uh, we talked <laughs> about how the market is exploding for athleisure wear and how Viore, a, an indie brand, is crushing right now. Now, Viore is Watch a company out. that we're sponsored by. They make the best athleisure wear. It looks good. It's comfortable. It's uh, It lasts a long time. They have a lifetime guarantee for all of their products. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 25% off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to Viori Clothing. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code listed on the page for 25% off. And then we talk a little bit about the current events and our thoughts around them. Then we got into the questions. The first question, this person wants to know what we think of finishers. These are exercises people do at the end of the workouts to finish off. I don't know. Hey. The next question, this person wants to know how important it is to have a low back arch when you're chest pressing. So we talk about the value of the arch. The next question, this person says, hey, for athletes, what's the best balance between cardio, resistance training, and mobility training? And then the final question that we answer this person wants to know what our biggest client pet peeves were when we were training clients. Also, this month, all month long, our high-intensity interval training program, MAPS HIT, is 50% off. This is a very effective fat-burning program in the short term. In other words, you will burn more fat in a short period of time following MAPS HIT than you will with any other program. It's intense, so make sure it's appropriate for you. But, of course, it's summertime. Everybody wants to burn body fat. That's why we put this one on sale. Now, of course, don't forget the program includes uh, videos and demos and things you could do. Uh, you basically follow the whole program by logging in. So here's how you get your discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com. And use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Do you know what I like to see? What? Hmm. Um, not that, I mean, it's just heartwarming. Every night when we're working out of town, you, uh, you call your son and read a story to him. Oh yeah. 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 I like to make uh well, that's been, um, it's cute. That's I, nice, dude. Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess, uh, this is my first go around as a dad and I, I don't know if that's a thing for other fathers, but for me personally, it's been my favorite time is to, to read to him. It's not t-shirt time. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's t-shirt time. Story time. Uh, but we do say that about bath time. It's bath time. It's your favorite time of the day. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. So we do that in my oh, house. Now is he, is he like really paying attention to the stories and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I even like, well, so I read them about, I don't know, there's seven or 10 books a night and I'll, I'll lay him out on the bed and let him go grab like his favorite. So he picks one? Yeah, so he'll pick one, and he's starting to get- Does like, he pick like a favorite? Yeah, Katrina hates it. He likes all the daddy ones. Does he really? Yeah, <laughs> I love my daddy. 
uh, data. The Jimmy Fallon data book is hilarious to me. I think I brought it up before in the show. Yeah. But it's like literally all it says, you know, it's an animal and with the animal noise it makes. And then it says data, like the whole book is that. But he loves that. Uh, and then at the very end of the book, it says, uh, you know, and now, now together we say it one more time. And then the, you turn it open, it says data real big. And he's figured that out. And so then before I open that last page, he gets all excited. He gets all yeah. excited and he says data. So it's uh it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it's a, it's actually something that I don't know, who knows how long uh you know, I I'm going to try and make this commitment that I forever uh read with him at night and when he gets to the age when he's probably no in not interested in reading dada books anymore and he wants to read other books that as a family will sit and read. You know, Katrina can read what she wants to read. He'll read. Oh, it's just quiet time. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm going to try and continue that. Like, and in, in part of that, uh, if I'm committed to doing that right now, then it starts, I think, first with me staying committed to, you know, reading to him now, even when I'm out of town. So Katrina will normally FaceTime me when, when he's, uh, and there's been a couple times where, you know, it just didn't line up because we were working or something. And so I've missed out on it, but very, very, I think I can definitely count on uh, one hand, uh, since he's been born that I have not read from him, read to him at six thirty. Oh, yeah, if you're consistent, it'll, it'll remain. That's what sure. I hope. Yeah. It's yeah like, it's... like my daughter, she's 10 and still, she doesn't go to bed unless I go to her room and give her a kiss. Mm -hmm. She still won't go to bed. So she'll, she'll. She'll get ready, be in bed, and she'll wait there with her light on. And if I take too long, she'll call me, Baba, Baba, <laughs> and I go in there and I give her a hug and a kiss. And yeah. I hope that never changes. I know, me too. I, and that's kind of what I'm hoping. I, and I, I obviously I realize that one day he'll get tired of reading the, those types of books. But then I would think that it would evolve to other types of books, right? And and I'll continue to read, you know, to him or with him uh, as much as I can. I just think that you know it wasn't something that. Uh, we did too much, you know, my, my mom, I remember a few times, like, you know, we did, uh, evening devotionals as a family for a while, which obviously was probably good for us. Um, but I remember as a kid when we were implementing that it was later in, in my, you know, young, uh, or, uh, early adulthood or whatever. And I was like a little re uh, resistant of it just because it wasn't something that was already mm -hmm. implemented into our life. So I'm hoping that. I can implement that early and it's something he looks forward to and he wants to do and I can just stay stay consistent with that because I wish I did read more when I was younger. Mm -hmm. That didn't really kick off for me until my 20s. Yeah, these are the the things that you're consistent with. Um, they tend to become a part of your um, your family culture. Like in my family, it was very important that we all ate dinner together. We never ate dinner separately. Now, and this isn't judging other families that are, but just I know, and I didn't know any different as a kid. Everybody waited, you know, the dinner was the the, the table would be set, and we'd sit and wait for everybody to sit down. Yep. Before we start eating, and so we do that now with you know. With, so my kids grew up that way. Yeah, we do the same thing. Yeah, so they don't. They don't. So we just transitioned to that right now, right? So he's he's finally like able to like kind of feed him, kind of <laughs> feed himself. He's making throw shit everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So we're there now, right? And that was something that Katrina and I agreed on. She was raised that way. I I was raised. That was another thing that I think my my mom did really good was we always had dinner at the dinner table, um, and we couldn't watch TV at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was in a different mm -hmm. room, and it was. Uh, you know, and the kid, we as kids set the table, and we, we, we had our dish night and everything. So, yeah, I, I and we. It, it's funny because you actually see he behaves better and 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 actually eats better when we all do it together. Yeah. So we've even picked up on those patterns when you know maybe there was a time where because when it, Katrina it took a little while for her to kind of like figure the timing out of like when he's eating and when we were going to make our dinner for when we first were transitioning into feeding him whole foods. You know, we were actually eating at different times, and when it got to a point where he was being a little more act, more aware and eating mm -hmm. himself with his hands, like you know, we made that transition. And instantly, when we made that transition to just feeding him by himself, like in the di your kitchen area on his high chair, to all of us sitting at the table and eating, he does way. Well, you food. find, especially when the kids get older, there's not a lot of time where everybody's together at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to designate. And why not have it make, you know, be dinner? Yeah, it's why, important. Why it's important to have family time like that. Going back to like reading stories and all that, like uh, we just got a bunch of those really cool illustrated 
kind of sciencey books. You, have you ever heard of like Animalium or um, uh, what's the other? It's like Historium or no, I haven't. Yeah, they're kind of like uh, encyclopedias, but uh, they give you a lot of real detailed information about uh, you know plants or about like animals. Is or, that kind of like uh, remember World Books version of that child? Uh, God, what was it called? You remember, did you guys ever have World Book growing mm. up? Oh, you guys didn't have the encyclopedias that were all. It was like yeah, it was a lot like that, like the Britannicas and all that. Yeah, like, why can't I think of the it, name? That's gonna drive me crazy. I anyway, Funk and Wagnalls. That's what I. Mean. <laughs> I mean, that was the name of the encyclopedia. Well, is that the yeah, name of it? Funk and Wagnalls. That's I think it was like the great cheaper, name. It was the cheaper version of uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like my mom buying the multi <laughs> the, 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 the version knockoff version, the multi meal. That's yeah. it exactly. Yeah. So I was reading uh, the the boys. Um, you know. Uh, I was trying it out. I was trying to go a little bit more, um, you know, detailed information because I, I, I always read them like silly stories and, you know, try and ad lib and do all this kind of stuff. And so, and they were getting into it because it's really interesting and fascinating to see all this stuff. And I'm reading, and it's a very like descriptive, uh, you know, type of uh, uh, content. And, and <laughs> as I'm reading and kind of really trying to get through this, uh, Everett kind of looks up at me and like stops me and he puts his hand over his mouth and he goes, because <laughs> uh, he's bored. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like you little shit. Uh, I was laughing so hard though because it was like so out of left field, you know. And I was like, "Oh my god, that was like one of his first like best jokes you've ever done." Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it made me it made me proud. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah, dude, Jessica sent me videos uh, the other day of her of the be her belly moving. You can see. Oh, uh, it's starting to happen now. Yeah, it's like or, like overnight. It went from yeah. we couldn't. Isn't that trippy to, to watch? Like, yeah, you could just see the little, uh, y you know, like a uh, bump kind of move around. Yeah, there. right now yeah. it looks like little flutters or little whatever. So uh, is she like Katrina was hardcore into like all the apps that talk about like each stage of development yes. where they are like when they could start actually hearing things outside the belly uh -huh. like what phase that is. Is she following all that? Oh yeah, both of us. I mean, I love that stuff. And, yeah. so, and I'm talking a lot to the baby now that you know I'll, I'll go down like belly level and yeah. have a little conversation with my kid and I'll say things indirectly to Jessica. I'll be like, your mama's acting crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Passive aggressive. <laughs> you little cutie. <laughs> I'm sorry you're in this person. No, uh, just I plant don't. seeds. No, plant it's, it's, seeds. it's adorable. I, I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm loving the whole thing. Dude, you missed last night a fucked up movie. What'd you guys watch? Oh, yeah, that's bro. right. You weren't there, Adam. Bro. You guys always oh. make weird choices. Bro, right no, 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 no. We, we had talked about watching this though a while ago. Remember Parasite? Uh, oh yeah, I've seen the, it. You saw oh, the, you the, seen the, it. the Korean. Yeah, That's a good movie. You you liked it? It was crazy. Great movie, bro. At the at that twist, I was like, "What's happening?" Yeah, but it was so good this, though. What? It was such a good Dude, movie. I, it went got dark right away. It went. Uh, it was like light, yeah. fun, light, fun, dark. Oh, I thought it was well written. Uh, so I, well I thought written. it was too, but yeah. I was not expecting. Yeah. It to oh, dark it was like nothing that. like what I thought either. Very thought provoking for sure. Oh, I mean, dear. it was like it was interesting because I didn't in the beginning. It felt like kind of a comedy. You know, right. like like the way that they're portraying, uh, you know, them, the characters, the and characters, stuff. and like how you know they're kind of con artists and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, yeah, like it got dark. Like this guy comes out and stabbing everybody. Yeah, Justin and I were sitting there, like, oh what shit, we're like, whoa, yeah. where'd this come from? I don't like this roller coaster of feelings. Oh, yeah. you guys didn't? I loved it. I thought uh, it was a great. I, I, I liked it. I, I, thought I just it, thought it was it was it was took me off guard. For I, sure. Yes, you know, I don't know if I like uh, the feeling of. And I, I can appreciate it, but I don't mind emotional roller coaster movies. I actually appreciate that, but I don't like it when I go from happy fun to <laughs> oh shit to a real dark. Place. Yeah, like, see, to me, that's a sign of a really well written movie if it can invoke emotion, sure, and especially when it can invoke uh, really opposing emotions, like happy, then all of a sudden you're really sad, then yeah. you're scared, then you're like when you can, that, a good movie can take you all over the place and what i loved about that is like it's not predictable mm -hmm. so if it can emotionally it super move in all different directions for, yeah. it's not predictable well written movie yeah. i thought it was a great it, movie. Was, it was definitely original yeah, jojo rabbit that. did that to me when the, the, it got dark uh, uh, in that movie too oh i was like God. so mad i'm like why yeah you know but it was i mean it was also yeah it's another for, really really for, really good didn't movie. it win awards parasite both it did. did, yeah, both, yeah, yep. both those movies. Yeah, really interesting. I've yeah. never watched a, a Korean film before, but I, I appreciate it. There's the humor was, was. Oh, that yeah, it was really funny. I was I was dying yeah. through the first part. You guys want to hear some crazy news? I looked Let's up some it. crazy news today. There's all kinds of weird news. Well, going all on. the news is crazy right now. So I looked up <laughs> alternative. <laughs> <laughs> what side of the crazy are we yeah, going to expose? Yeah, alternative crazy news. So um, apparently, a Spain, a, a porn star in Spain. Uh, is going to get charged with murder or manslaughter 
because she did uh, one of those mystic rituals with this man where they inhale psychedelic toad venom. And apparently it killed the man. So she's now going to be charged. Wait, wait. She's the prostitute and she did porn it Porn star. This... Oh, she's a porn star. Different. Yeah, oh, sorry. Different, yeah. Por- prostitutes don't get filmed. So she didn't have an active shaman license. No. So yeah, exactly. So they're doing a, they were doing like a, a mystic ritual. and But why is she the one held accountable for it? Because they... I think she gave it to him. She uh... gave it to him and then he died. Wow! I know, dude. Damn, that and sucks. I didn't think you you inhaled the the frog venom, or I thought they just like uh, uh, pokey with it, dude. I, I had a friend that did. Actually, she she rented space in my studio back when I had a studio, so she was all into that yeah. kind of stuff. And she came into work one day just to grab some stuff. She had taken the day off. She was a massage therapist, and her face looked like. All swollen. Yeah, it looks swollen. that frog shit, right? It looks swollen like somebody like hit, you know, beat her up or whatever. I'm like, what happened to you? She's like, oh, I'm cleansing my body. I'm like, what? <laughs> so she shows me her oh, arm. Oh, you feel great like, after you're done. Yeah, and she's like, she has like these marks on her arm from this, this you know, frog poison or whatever. And she's explaining it to me. She's like, it's cleansing my body. I'm like, well, what happened? She's like, well, my face is swelling has gone down. And I looked at her like, <laughs> what it looked like before. Because <laughs> it's messing right now. Oh, no. And she's like, she threw up and shit herself. And she's like, but now I'm starting to feel amazing. I'm like, well, I mean. The, the logic to that. The contrast se- probably yeah, does I feel know. That's what The logic behind that seems very similar to someone being like, oh, my God, my my right arm hurts so bad. And then grabbing their left arm and breaking it. Yeah, you know what yeah, yeah. Like, how bad yeah. your right arm feel yeah. now? Not so yeah. bad. My, yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. my left arm's fucking it's broken. Just, I think yeah, the contrast. Oh, I feel <laughs> cleansed now. Well, yeah. Cause you yeah. threw up and shit everything <laughs> and, and, and you were fear for your life. Anything's going to feel better after that. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, so well, in other news, I, I think I brought up the, the, we were, we were talking about all the different markets that are up the uh, Campbell soup, 140%. So that's been like skyrocketing as everybody. Really? Oh, the man. one that's buy canned foods. Here's one that tripped me out though. I was, reading this uh above ground pools are like impossible to get right now yeah i was telling you guys like uh i remember my brother uh telling me about that like he was uh he just got something he got like one of the last ones but it's like you can't find them anywhere now nowhere is that because people are all at home yeah, yeah. so trampolines was the other one and i yep. think you brought that up justin is so people are trying to find ways obviously one to stay cool and and play or entertain their kids and uh, public places to go do a lot of this stuff is still shut down yeah. or will be shut down. Yeah. And so, yeah, so pools, the sa- even like the sand to try and level the ground out to put a pool on it, it's just like impossible right now wow. to, to get what a hold of. A, what an interesting market to yeah, get into. Yeah, weird, huh? Do you know they used to call trampolines jumpolines? And then your mom got on one. Hey! Wow! Bing! Wow! Sorry, I've been holding that who's, one for. Who, who's that referred to? I've been holding that yeah. one for yeah. a long time. I, I gotta know if I hey, gotta get NBA's you back coming that. back, dude. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they did. Uh, they're doing the uh, twenty-two teams. So they're doing what sport. Is that again? Yeah, basketball. Oh, okay. Huh? So that not all teams are back. Um, so unfortunately, the Warriors won't be playing. How come? Uh, didn't have a good enough record. So they took basically the twenty-two teams with the best record uh, because we should have already oh, had. Oh, I see. Yeah, we should have uh, already had playoffs and everything. Pretending like they're continuing from. Uh, season that didn't yeah, exist. Yeah, so it's going to be a, the, an eight-game season, and then it'll move into like a single then double elimination playoff, hmm. and it'll all be played in Orlando, Florida. So it's all being played at some, I think, Den- Disney's, uh, you know, Orlando, Florida's uh, convention or some shit at somewhere over there. Um, but yeah, 22 teams uh, will be allowed to play. They'll play eight, like what they consider season games, and then they'll move into a tournament style for for playoffs. So it sounds like we're starting to see that though. Now it looks like oh, sports are coming back. I know. We, I bet you the the viewership's probably going to be through the roof. Yeah, you know, with everybody just oh yeah. I mean, we were just walking last night, right when we were walking, and uh, it was dark, right? So we were, as we were walking the neighborhood over here. And all these all these houses have you know big picture windows and stuff, and you can see TV. Like people, so many people are like watching replay games. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Like, and I'm like a diehard classic. Sport, games. I, yeah, I'm a diehard sports fan, but I, I even I'm not like that thirsty to where it's like I'm watching like games that were five years old and stuff yeah. like that. Oh uh, yeah. Well, Santa, I, Santa Clara County starting to open up uh, uh, stores and shops now. Yeah, you know I just that? got a text from from Courtney that uh, my barber just uh, opened back up with uh, appointments only. So I was like. Oh, Oh yes, oh, dude! Thank God, thank God. Save Sal. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> let's take a. Hey, it's not bad, right? Does that now. Super, I hey, does that my mean super cuts is open. What <laughs> is super cuts open? I hope. I don't know if should uh, have Doug Google that for yeah. you. See yeah. if super cuts in San Jose is hey, open. Hey, Doug. come on, the hair doesn't look bad right now. I, I figured out a way. I kind of combed it, slicked it a little bit. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I gave you some of my palm aid. You're good. Yeah. Somebody said I, I look like the the guy. What's that beer guy? 
What's his name? Uh, interesting man in the world. The most uh, interesting man. Of course in the world. you would what a, connect. What a great. Yeah, as I say, of course yeah. you would connect to that. Weird. Uh, how about I share the other story? We tell every you know every like week or so, uh, marketing team will message over to us, uh, especially Sal. Because Sal does most of these. Um, hey, I need a you know a promo video for this. We're running an ad for this or whatever. And so Sal does it, and then I get a message. Why does Sal look like a homeless person? No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my god, dude. so stupid, uh, <laughs> dude. Uh, dude, the other day, the other night, my I you know ran out of protein, so I went and got another plant protein over at the the grocery store. I forgot how how easy the Organifi is to digest versus the other. I don't know how you forget that. You bring it up every time. Yeah. Every well, time you decide to go a different direction. You know what I mean by forget? Like you just kind of you just because you get used to something and mm. then you use something else and you can tell. Um, and so I was trying to figure out why I, I digest it so much better. They add uh, enzymes. They actually add digestive enzymes to their protein. It, this is something I never really is that paid not normal. To. Some proteins will do this. Hmm. Um, I've seen some whey proteins do this as well. Well, they'll include like protease in there, which is a, the enzyme that breaks down protein. And that can help with uh, with breaking it down and with assimilation. Well, this well, is the first sense. trip that I'd have to say that I used the least amount of Organifi green juice. I only used it one time this time that we were together because we stocked up. We were so bad normally. Well, we, we actually prepared this time. We brought our own food up. Yeah. yeah, 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 too, yeah. Which and, helped a lot. And Doug doubled down because yeah. I went grocery shopping for us and Doug made a list. But then uh, maybe he didn't trust that I was going to get enough <laughs> greens because I think yeah. I got like four or five of those massive heads of broccoli plus asparagus and then I saw what Doug met up with us like he had oh man and all that, that asparagus has really been doing a number on my pee man Whew. oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that you, know, that's, you know that's an that's a ge- aroma you know that's a genetic thing right is it yeah so some people really don't make that smell no. no. Yeah. I, I thought so it was universal. Who, I thought so too. I've never met somebody that that, that happened to, but that's uh, that's uh, that's what I've read. I mean, <laughs> I've smelled a lot of peas. Really? I thought that was like just a universal thing that everybody No, eats some peas. some people's pee does not smell when they mm. eat asparagus. Now that's interesting to me. Like what is it inside their body that co- doesn't cause it to make it smell like that? I have I think I actually don't know. I think it has to do with the way we, whatever the compound, what whatever the makes waste the smell, is, is they something. use I somehow. I don't, I don't know. Mark it down. Yeah. <laughs> mark, mark it down. Have you, doesn't have an answer. No, I ate some of those protein balls, Adam. Uh, How do you like those, huh? They're, they're all really good. Uh, now, that was whey protein. That wasn't, uh, have you ever used the Organifi uh, yeah. protein? You know, and uh, complete transparency. This is why I keep both, um, and this is why too. Why uh, part of the motivation, personally for me, of like us working with both Organifi and Legion, is I use uh, Organifi when I'm just making a shake, um, and that's it. Like, a, a, and if I'm using a fruit shake, so I notice like when I do like blueberries, strawberries, banana type stuff, it ma- it pairs really well with Organifi stuff. If I do something more savory, peanut butter, peanut butter balls, chocolate, Nutella. Um, and I make a shake or, or a dessert that's like got protein in it. Um, I find whey goes much better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that makes and, sense. And, but I've tried both. Like I've, I've used both, uh, and like pancakes when I make pancakes, I prefer the whey. although I have made them with the Organifi. So I, I, I keep both in my, in, inside my cupboard. And I, I do notice that I do feel better from um organifies protein powder than i do the way so that's why i try and like mm-hmm. you know minimize how much of the way i am in comparison i notice i'm less gassy is what i notice because the whey protein man that still has that effect you know the old the old protein <laughs> fart adage right i, I only that. notice it if i'm doing it a lot like if i had like a, a yeah. for some weird reason a shake and a bar in a day or something the two oh. products See, the, had- the uh, granify doesn't do that to me yeah, it's just very, it. yeah, very, it's, very easy to digest. It is. Dude, I just, I just found out about the asparagus pea right now. Oh, uh, okay. I got to follow up to the protein so, fart after that. Okay, so I was wrong. Actually, it's not that some people's pee doesn't smell; it's that some people can't smell that odor. Ah, uh, so that it's, that makes it's more there. Sense. It exists. Forty percent of study participants. There was a study where they did this, and forty percent of them said they could smell the, the they could sell smell their urine after eating asparagus. Sixty percent said they could not. So there's something in the odor itself some people can't detect. Well, that's similar to, you know, you Justin transition for you, I'll help you out here. It's like farts. You know, some people think their farts don't stink. 
Your shit fucking <laughs> yeah, they just can't smell, bro. Smell yeah, 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 it yeah. smells. Well, I brought that up because there's a, actually a legit study that, uh, okay, it said this study reveals that smelling your partner's farts is the secret to a longer life. Wow. I was, what? Like, I was like, yes. This, I call bullshit. This is validation. Uh, Dude, Courtney this is from the up. Journal of Medicinal Chemistry Communications. It sounds legit. Katrina and I, 10 years, yeah. still going strong. Wow. Yeah. You, 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 what a terrible husband. You want your wife to die early? Ten- <laughs> <laughs> Prolong yeah. her life. Staves off cancer, she, has all these like uh, bro, yeah, 100% protective bro. qualities to it. I'm like, it's time to start hotboxing again. Yeah, let me yeah, tell you, I mean, Courtney and Jessica Dutch are going to live a long time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. For sure. You need to start, you need to start yeah. blasting your wife. See? <laughs> your Depriving your, your poor girl. We'll see what she thinks girl. as she listens She to still episode. hasn't heard you fart ever? No. You, she hasn't heard you fart? Yep. What? Still, 10 years, dude. Why? 10 years. And you know what's funny? If people listening that are like tri- tripping on that, it, w- it hasn't been hard. Really? Yeah, it's not a hard thing to do. To just mm. just just prevent. Just and I, to, and maybe that's maybe you're just not being yourself. Well, maybe because we uh, <laughs> maybe because we started dating after I really honed in my nutrition, right? So if you if you Bro, were, don't make that bullshit. You bless you bet you bust ass in front of us all. <laughs> oh the time. yeah, you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, that, it's like because nutrition's great. All of a sudden, you still <laughs> no, fart like crazy. No, my point in saying that is it was probably a lot more. He has un- righteous farts. Un- apparently. Un- uncontrollable. <laughs> yeah. In my 20s, when I was eating a lot of, when my diet was off, my digestion was off. And so, probably back then, I, there's no way I could probably contain it. But now, you know, my the amount of farts that I have in a day are so minimal that I just make an effort to leave the room when my, my girl. You must are, leave the room all the time. When we're recording, you're busting ass all the time in the studio, <laughs> you, bro. It is not that often. Stop. Out of the three of us, I am the least. I don't know. No, it's pre- you're pretty not. frequent, dude. Yeah. Doug, yeah. chime in here. Yeah, chime in, Doug. I don't know. I haven't taken a survey. No, let's, uh, let's, uh, honestly, I try not to pay. Uh, we got Switzerland over here. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, Doug. I don't, I, it's like fart elitism here. You know? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, that's the hell. Hell. Hey, don't be fuck. Hey, don't be fucking mad just because I I can do that for my girl. That's yeah. it. She, I, I paint toilets. I, I'll admit that I do paint toilets. <laughs> yeah, so. This guy's the worst. Come I, on over that, here. That, 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 I'm not even the worst, dude. You want to hear something? About, you want to hear another crazy story? I love mm. looking up weird news sometimes. <laughs> So a Pennsylvania woman was arrested Wednesday for allegedly keeping her dead grandmother in a freezer for 15 years. What? While the family collected her social security checks. She oh said, my God. What? She said that they're poor, that they needed the social security checks, so they, they just kept their the grandma sorry. died. So they just put her in the in the freezer. <laughs> now, okay. Like you're going to hell. Yeah, well, I'm what sorry. happens? Like, how do you, what's the charge? I don't know if they can prove They didn't that. murder her. Oh, well, I guess fraud, fraud right? Yeah, it would yeah. be fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do they get them for? Is it, do you get mail fraud for that too? Like how many things do you get? That stuck? sounds like a weekend at Bernie's kind of a movie Dude, in the making. I, that's that's crazy though. 15 years. So imagine collecting 15 years of social security. What's crazy to me is that as as old as we are and as long and the crazy news that we all read and see, I've never heard something like that before. Mm-hmm. Like the th- the thought like that crossed someone's mind like grandma dies and the first thing you think of is oh my god. We can't tell anybody. Let's put her in the freezer because our social security checks are going to end. Yeah, Dude, imagine that must have been the time. It's almost like right? they just find out she's in. They, they're all like, you know, uh, depressed about, and all of a sudden, like a mailman comes by and like drops off. A right, check. it had they're to like, happen like that. That's the only wait way a that, minute, click. Yeah, that's yeah. the only way that had to happen. Right? Yeah, are you guys uh, familiar with how? Who was that one hitman for the mafia? Was it the? I, they called him the Ice Man. I think it was. He used to freeze. He'd kill someone, freeze the body, then he would let it defrost, and then he would. Uh, dump the body somewhere, and what it would do is it would hide the time of death, because he'd freeze them right when they're when they're dead. Then like he'd wait like six months. Does that really throw that off? Or I do be- we have? Are we oh, further wow. along in forensics now? That's what he used to do, and apparently it worked. I don't know. You're, you're, that's a good question. Yeah, I think I w- he got caught because someone didn't fully defrost. And they saw ice crystals, uh, and so then they pieced it together. But before that happened, they couldn't identify the time of death. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he would just freeze, that. freeze them. That's, that's really. Crazy. He's the same guy that would the put ice them in, man. Yeah, and they, he would also uh, put them in a vat of acid to, uh, to yeah. boil off the that's, hole that's or whatever. Just gruesome. That's disgusting. That, gruesome. That is. Anyway. <laughs> that is that Dude, is. Uh, th- are you are you keeping up with the athleisure wear wars right now, Adam? Yeah, no. There was actually just a great. Yeah, no. There was a. It's funny. It's actually true. There's like a lot going on yeah. right now with. Well, there's this huge spike in athleisure wear because so many people are either one not working at all at home or two can work from home now mm-hmm. that weren't able to to work. So uh, they actually just had this article with uh, talking about Viore and labeling them as like an indie brand in comparison to like Champion and Nike and all those. 
and they're like kicking ass. I mean, uh, Viore had 1100 percent increase year over year mm -hmm. in sales. So it was the women's jogger yeah. or something like that. Yeah, the women's it? jogger is like the most popular. It's like their $80. It's like the, the It feels like they're getting threatened, you know, by, well, by their market no, share. I mean, it's, it's, it's good it, news. They're, they're they're making waves. Well, no, and, I mean the, the it, big brands are getting threatened by oh. the, the it's up and coming all, well, brands. A lot of it too is I just think it's the future of how business is done. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> you know, Viore started as a direct consumer first, then moved to brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And so they have already established how to scale and grow a business without a brick and mortar at all. So then in a situation where all brick and mortar is closed, it was a very natural pivot for them. And they already established a very good community online. Mm -hmm. And then you have brands like that are older, Nike, Champion, et cetera, that started back when and so they started brick and mortar it was a more of a challenging pivot for these massive companies to switch over to that plus mm. imagine how much they're all getting hit by having stores that are sitting still and they still got to pay leases you yeah, know, it's you a good, they're in yeah. a very good position yeah you know, they make clothes that are comfortable but look good so perfect you can wear them at home mm -hmm. you know whatever um, they're positioning themselves well with their online sales. Yeah, and even the f handful of, because they do now have some brick and mortars, they very small space, right? It's literally like a showroom. Mm -hmm. They don't keep a lot of stock inside there. It's literally so people. Which I think is far, is smart to kind of keep that so that way you could go in because clothes, it's such an experience of like how it feels, how it fits, how it's tailored to you. So, yeah, and that's the thing about Viore is just how much better it feels in comp comparison to the Well, others. I think this is what we're going to see with many businesses going forward. I think a lot of people are rethinking thinking the way to start up. In fact, I always I think it's interesting when I see someone who doesn't think this way and they like want to open up a facility. Even though like, our audience, right? We have a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs, we have a lot of uh, people that like open gyms or want to open a gym. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just I wouldn't advise that be the the place you go first. Like I would build a community online first mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that totally. is that is that has the similar uh, values, has similar things that you have in common, and that's fitness related. And then you then from there, I take that community, and then I would consider building a brick and mortar. Versus, I really want to have a gym. I want to start my own gym, yeah. and then you don't have much of a following on online, and then you go straight into trying to just really hard. Not to say it's impossible, but it's. I think that's the move. Yeah, I just, do think that's the move. It, it's an interesting uh, economy right now too. You're seeing like r mixed reports of success in some areas and. Uh, damage and others. The stock market definitely is not reflecting. The stock market makes no sense, dude. Unem okay, so you have tons of people who filed for unemployment, and hopefully a lot of that changes now that things start to reopen. I'm, I'm sure there's some permanent damage, but there's I'm sure a lot of it will get reversed. But even with all this unemployment stuff, new home uh, applications for mortgages for new homes is up 17.5 percent compared to a year ago. So with all this stuff Weird. going on, yeah, and I think it has to, the, the interest rates are low. And also, I read this the article and it said how there are lots of households that didn't get affected because they work in tech or and what they're doing because they save their money is they see opportunities to get you know houses mm. with that are maybe a little cheaper right now, yeah, with good interest rates. Yeah. So houses sales have gone up, yeah. Which I did not. I didn't anticipate that at all. No. no. Well, a, and what I wonder though, if that that's just the initial, right? The, yeah. And we are remember too. We are right now, in uh, year over year, this is the hottest time to buy houses. Period. Yeah. This is when everybody moves. This is when everybody mm -hmm. makes it. So when you get into June, July, August months, they're the most popular months for the for housing to to climb. Anyways. So what I'm and so and then you add in all the opportunists that are jumping in right now because of interest rates. So the question will be, what happens at the end of this year going into next year if we eventually see some sort of a decline? I just can't imagine that it continues to move this direction. No, I, yeah. I don't think so. Um, especially in the, the Bay Area is always an enigma, though, because it's so expensive. Where we live, I'm always thinking, it can't get more expensive. Well, the reason- And then it does. Well, the reason why that does is just because you can't build anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no more, there's just as many people trying to get jobs over here and you have all these startups and tech mm -hmm. and there's no more places to move into. So that's what drives that. Right, so. right, right. So you just low inventory mm -hmm. and a lot of restrictions on, on building and whatnot. So it makes it much more, I guess, much more difficult. So, so Adam, uh, I really liked the, the what you said, um, I think it was in the forum about, um, you know, how if everybody who posted the you know, that black uh, tile um, uh, on Instagram, if everybody did that, just they just donated. I thought that was such a good point. Well, you know, and I don't want to come off like I'm 
you know, that somebody who put a black square up, like I don't want to invalidate what they did, right? Or I don't, and I don't know what they did outside of that, right? Like you could have put a, a black square up and you could have been part of the marching and you could be doing things at your dinner table with your family and having really important conversations. And that was one of your ways mm -hmm. of, of expressing and showing that. I just know, and we've talked about on this show before that, you know, two of the, I think, most powerful things that we can actually do to, to make great shift and change is to vote and to vote with our dollars. And uh, since right now, like, there's no voting going on in California for us, there's not something that we can go out and, and do right away voting, but we can vote with our money and we can put it towards organizations that are trying to make a good. And I was just making an observation that, you know, there was 28.9 million black squares that were posted. And imagine if all those same people just donated $1 towards a cause that actually is taking action to change these inequalities. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't to, to belittle or devalue or to say that, oh, you're, you're this because you put a black square up. It was because people didn't understand why I didn't, you know, and, and that went because we had already had a conversation around what, what we were doing well before the black square thing even happened and felt good about it. And I felt that I saw a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people, especially people with, with big voices like ourselves in our, our, our space that we know of, that it came off more like virtue signaling. Like, look at me, I, I too, you know, mm -hmm. I, and, and instead of taking action and doing something. So for me, that was what I was trying to explain was imagine how powerful that would have been if, you know, instead, and by the way, a lot of that, the Black Square thing, ended up hijacking, you know, Black Lives Matter it did. content. Did you hear about that? Because yes. people were, were, God, I wonder if that was like a, a way to get to, to kind of prevent the protests from happening mm -hmm. because they needed to kind of shut down social media. Because what you did is you'd go to the hashtag Black Lives Matter and then you'd just see a bunch of black tile. Which, by the way, was was posting videos of cops hitting people and doing things that people should be aware of, sure. like, should mm -hmm. see, and and promoting where people were organizing and getting. I mean, that's a that's a powerful hashtag for people to be able to use as a resource and a tool. And now it was flooded with these black tiles because what happened was every some you know you know artist in because it started with uh, music industry. The music industry. industry you know, put it out there, and then everybody just followed suit really quick without really paying attention or really thinking about what they po possibly were doing. And, you know, and I felt like I got shamed because we had actually thought about it before it even came out on things that we wanted to do to take action. And Well, one of, one of the organizations that we're donating to is the Center for Policing Equity, and they use real data to change discriminatory practices. This is important because these days there are no, I can't think of any explicitly racist legislation, meaning it's not in the actual law like the old Jim Crow laws or, or whatnot in the past. So these days it's much more underground. You have to pay attention to the numbers and the data to see if, if racism is being used within the system. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they do. They look at the data. And if things look out of balance, then they do an investigation and then they they put safeguards to change that. Because unfortunately, we're in a situation where we're trying to change the hearts of people. And, and, and doing that can be very difficult. I think forcing them doesn't work. Um, I think we have to find other ways. And when it comes to policing, um, I mean, and I want to say this too, I have family members that are, uh, that are cops and friends that are cops, and they're very good people. Very, very good people. They're not racist. They have lots of integrity. Um, and like my, my brother-in-law right now, he's going out, uh, to, to work in San Jose and, you know, he's asking for family members to pray for his safety. And then he comes home and 2 AM, 3 AM, he checks in with the family. Hey, I made it home. Family members are waiting for that text middle of the night so they could reply back. Thank you. You know, I'm so happy you're safe. And so there are good police out there. And I think that, you know, that, that, that organization I just mentioned helps work within that because you're going to get some people it's i don't know i don't know if it's ever possible to get all the bad people out of any position there's always going to be some that are just shit especially positions of power um so you know look at the hard data i think that's very important so what we wanted to do is just is to act mm -hmm. not talk a lot you know and look i i know i know voices and talking and, and that stuff it can also have an impact in fact right now you're seeing more fundraising for uh, this movement 
um, than ever before because it's on everybody's mind. So that's a, a very good thing. Politicians, of course, are going to start talking about it, hopefully pass legislation or eliminate legislation uh, that contributes to you know racist outcomes, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very important. But you know, we wanted to promote uh, peace, unity, because there's a lot of a lot of anger and hatred going on right now. A lot of innocent people getting hurt, and uh, so we thought, okay, let's let's talk about that. And and then besides talking a lot, let's put our money where our mouth is. Let's donate to an organization that's actually doing. Uh, you know, good work. Well, the, the idea was to to say less and do more. That's it. That mm -hmm. was really the the message behind all of it. I mean, all of us feel very very confident in who we are as individuals. I don't feel I need to post a black square to to prove to people that I'm not racist. Like I I, I know where my heart is. I know where all of your guys' heart is. And and the best thing for us to do was to do something. Hell, I just I'm I'm frustrated with the fact that. I what I see is more division happening, and that 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 breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. It's I, I I feel like we have come a long way. It's a lot of pent up. It's a lot of yeah. pent up uh, fair anger. Fair, yeah, and and I think it has to do with because these days it's not uh, explicitly blatant in the term like it like it was in the, let's say during the civil rights movement. There were actual laws that said, you know, black people you have this water fountain, white people, you have this water fountain, you can't go to school together. You can't. And that, that's like a very clear target. What we're dealing with now is racism in people's hearts. Mm. And that's a very difficult thing to tackle. It's, it's, it's much more difficult. It's much more insidious. Um, uh, but I think it's, it's important to talk about and bring. And then on the other side, you know, um, a lot of really, really good, honest, um, law enforcement are fearing for their lives. I have a friend who's uh, he used to work with me at, at the gym. He became a, a you know police officer, and so we're still friends on Facebook. He's got teenage kids. His teenage kids were getting threatened yeah, but here's by the, other people. Here's the problem with what you're saying right now, and this is where you get eaten alive, is because you're sharing a story right now from the, uh, a police officer's perspective. And because you can't share a story with me right now where somebody's been discriminated against mm. because of color. Mm. So that's what's why you have to be careful about how we voice our opinions on here because of that right there. Right. And so right. You, that's the thing that you, you, why we wanted to say less is because even though I understand where your heart is coming from and you're sharing a very real story, but there's people that are now listening that are, what about the person of color that was discriminated against? It doesn't against? discredit and any of that. I know, yeah. but it, yeah. it, it does for somebody else. I know. I well, know. And I think too that people are just going through a lot of the different stages of emotion with how to really, you know, in like like deal with it. And, and I think that we're seeing this in a lot of different directions and how people, uh, you know, decided to, to act upon, uh, you know, these emotions that got stirred up and, um, and, and that's why it's difficult because it, it, and that's why I think that, uh, you know, kind of, you know, less is more right now, just, you know, for, for us is, is, is a good strategy and where I think we're just going to have a more deeper conversation about it a little bit later on, uh, when it's not so charged and when people kind of come back to, uh, understanding, you know, what they, what they really, what their core values are and, and, you know, what authentically, um, you know, they want to present out there. Well, I think if this, uh, sparks a better conversation, I think if it wakes people up, um, I think it's going to be a good thing. I think if it raises money and actually changes things, um, in, in effective, objective ways, it'll be worth it. If it causes division and, and more hate and violence, um, that's not going to help uh, anybody, and so I, I just—that's what I call for, you know. Yeah, it was really. It, what's really interesting to me is like, there is nobody that supports uh, any of the four cops that did what no, they did. No, that was so no. blatant and obvious and terrible. It, Absolutely terrible. Thank God all of them got indicted. And that's too. why, too, yeah. I find it really interesting with the the retaliation of violence and and that that's happening in response to that because. I think everybody agrees. Well, it's you know, really weird that we're dividing each other right now and we're fighting when we all look at it and go like, holy shit, well, this well, is wrong. And I think, Something needs to happen. Well, Nobody's not saying dude, that. Everybody's been cooped up too. I mean, we, we we forgot about like the last few months of being inside, not ever being around other people. Like there's just so much tension even prior to this. So I think it's just like an eruption 
Uh, and, and, and this is something that's like, it's difficult because, you know, the emotional outburst of this, this, this one incident is so powerful that it, it brought back all these, uh, these feelings. Well, I have a lot of friends and family that, uh, were marching with the, the Black Lives Matter, um, protesters and they were saying how peaceful they were. Um, and there are reports that a lot of the, the violence and the, uh, the rioting and the looting, uh, is being instigated by outside uh, forces outside nefarious yes. forces. This is this is something that's happening. There are people on both extreme sides who they look at the, this as an opportunity to cause massive instability. Don't think for a second there aren't extreme right white supremacist groups mm -hmm. who don't enter into these these protests where people are definitely main, you know angry, civil disobedient, not being violent, not breaking things, and then they'll start it. They'll start it off. They'll throw the first brick or they'll kick, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll chant the wrong thing or whatever yeah. to get people to do, you know, things that discredits their movement, but causes lots of, uh, of, of instability. Um, there's extreme left movements. There are outside, look, uh, China, Russia, other countries are constantly looking for opportunities to cause instability. Don't think for a second, they're not looking at peaceful yet, but angry, intense protests and saying, this is going to be something we can manipulate. So we have to be very careful how we paint this whole thing. In, in my experience, from the people I know, the the Black Lives Matter movement largely, if not all, peaceful. But there are elements that are moving in that are causing some serious problems and division, hmm. which is why I, you know, I say, let's. I, I, I want to call for peace. Civil yeah. disobedience is a big part of this country. It's a good part of this country. We're free to protest, and I love that. It's a right every American shares. And, and I love that. I love yeah. it. It's caused incredible uh, change and growth in this country but, for many times, whether we were we were protesting for, for women's suffrage, the civil rights movement, gay marriage, uh, and ending you know the draft. Um, this is all very important. But violence and hatred um, doesn't unite very, very no. well. So pay attention. Uh, if you're a police officer, stay calm. Stay smart. If you're on the other side protesting, pay attention. Look around. Who are the instigators? Who are the ones trying to make you look bad because they're starting a bunch of damage or they're looting or they're being violent? Because that's going to misrepresent you too. So stay. That's why I say peace, love, and unity. And, and yes. let's all do this together. First question is from Katie G. Hart. What is your opinion on finishers? Are they necessary or helpful to build strength? Ah, yes. The happy ending of fitness programs. <laughs> <laughs> the, fi the finisher. Oh, I don't feel satisfied. I need to be oh. finished. So finishers refers to exercises that people do at the end of their workout. These are made up. And they, right. They Why are. are you validating well, them? Well, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> explaining, right? They're yeah. isolation movements. They're designed to add more volume, give you a better pump, that kind of stuff. I get you know why people do it they want to get they want to squeeze in more sets without um creating much more damage but there is a much better way of increasing volume over time with your workouts that's that's just it if you were to take um that's why wow, this question feels like deja vu for some reason yeah, no. yeah weird <laughs> so the, if you were to take your uh, you know your workout programming whatever it is whatever you're following if you're not following maps and you actually just measured the total volume sets reps weight you multiply all three of those right and you get your total volume so let's say it's chest day and you and you multiply that out and you've got you know 15,000 or 10,000 pounds of total volume it's probably some totally inflated number but let's just say for argument's sake 10,000 pounds of volume that you're moving of weight uh, on your chest and you saw you know Jolly Swole's Instagram and he's talking about the latest greatest finisher exercise that you should do best uh, content for <laughs> for chest day right and it's you know and normally finisher quote unquote exercises are you know, cable, like Sal's alluding to, isolation type exercises to kind of get the pump off or finish your workout. Okay, if you take th that the same scenario and instead of doing a finisher of, you know, three to five sets of these pumping exercises and you added one more uh, set of your incline barbell press that day and one more set of your dumbbell chest press exercise that day, you will get way more bang for you. You'll get more gains from that than just adding a finisher exercise. And even if you're listening to me right now and you're like, oh, that's bullshit. I follow Joey and I did his finisher thing and it totally helped my chest. What, for two weeks? And then your body got adapted to that because all you did was add volume to a workout. The body responded, changed, grew, got stronger, whatever, 
adapted, and then now it's plateaued again. Like until you figure out what you're actually doing that's causing the gains or not, uh, it's just it's it's silly to me, and well, it's and I don't like validating these things because I think it just confuses people on how to program well, design. Well, let's look at the value, right? The value is more volume, less damage. If that's what you're looking for, uh, there's a better way to add finishers. Um, not at the end of your workout. Do them on the days off in between. That's when I see lots of value of doing these isolation movements uh, and, mm. and getting the pump on the days. What we call frequency builders. Exactly. So like uh, like trigger sessions or focus sessions, right? Those are found in MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Aesthetic. Those are frequency builders. They add volume. They're lower intensity. And the exercises that make up those workouts would be considered finishers if you did them at the end of your, your normal long workout. So the way I like to do it is do your normal, regular, heavy workout. Then on the days in between when you're off, when you're not training that body part, throw in a few sets of some of these finishing exercises. Do it that way and watch what happens. Now, if you want to add something to the end of your workout, um, add, is add excuse me isometric movements. Squeeze the muscle really hard at the end of the workout. Do that for 10, 15 seconds. Hold the squeeze. Rest for 30 seconds to a minute. Repeat. Try that five times and watch what happens. Next question is from M Tino 10 How important is having a lower back arch when chest pressing? Are there ways to improve having a stronger arch? Well, since M Justin has the best. M Tino 10 Justin's always working on his arch. Yeah, he's oh, the, yeah. since he has the best one, we should ask him. I'm going to get a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, you guys. This, <laughs> helps, this helps with booty picks more than anything else. Yeah, no. Yeah. no, so when you lay on your back flat, you'll have this natural arch in your low back. Don't try to flatten that down. You want to bring it up just a little bit, tighten your body. Now, what that does is it allows you to bring or helps you bring your shoulder blades down and back and stabilize them so that you can press heavy weight. It actually is safer for your shoulders to, to press this way. It works the chest better as well. So this is that arch in your bench press is an important part of the form. Now, power lifters will exaggerate that to shorten the range of motion or to maximize leverage. If you're a power lifter, totally fine. But if you're a regular lifter, just do the natural arch, arch brace yourself, bring the shoulders down and back, and stabilize the shoulders. That I, is part of form. I actually don't like cueing this at all. It, I cue the shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. it, that creates the natural arch. Right. If you tell people about the arch, they think about their low back more than they think about what you really should sure. be thinking about. This isn't about your low back. This is about your pulling your shoulder blades back and down. When you pull your shoulder blades, and anybody listening right now can do it in your car or sitting in a chair or whatever you're out right now. Headlights. But, yeah. Pull, pull and squeeze your shoulder blades back and down. And when you do that, you'll feel that your, your low back naturally arches. Don't think just about at arching the low back. That's right. a bad cue, and I think mm. it's a it's a bad way to teach somebody this. You're naturally everybody has a natural arch. Yeah, no lay flat what. on the floor. Yeah. yeah, you'll naturally have it. Yeah, and some more than others. Okay, Justin. But <laughs> yeah. but by you, you guys are so jealous cueing the shoulder blades back and down, it's going to put a a perfect arch in your back that yeah. you don't need to be focused on it any more than that. And the only reason to focus on getting a more extreme one is if in your if you are in the sport of powerlifting and so you're trying to create more leverage. It will give you more leverage to get an excessive arch, but that more, doesn't compute to more gains. More yeah. leverage, definitely everything you said, but also don't forget the leg drive. And, and that's just to be more effective with your distribution of force and to be able to generate more force. And uh, the more stable your body feels uh, in that position, yes, you're going to have a natural arch because of exactly what Adam said with uh, you know bringing those shoulder blades back and down, but also, too, you want to be able to support everything by adding in your legs as, as another component. All right, next question is from Con Nielsen. For athletes, what is a good balance between cardio, resistance training, and mobility training? Mm, this oh, depends on the sport. It does, right? If you're whatever sport you're doing, that most of your training should be practicing uh, that sport, playing that sport. Uh, scrim doing scrimmages. Splort. Yeah, I said that word. Too much. <laughs> I got that. It's because yeah. that is vocabulary. Sorry. Right. Yeah, what like is this that. word? It's so foreign. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, I, I've trained athletes. Shut up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Practice your sport uh, most often. That's where most of your workouts should uh, should be placed. Now, as far as strength training is concerned, depends on what you're doing. Uh, if and it depends on what your season looks like. If you're doing lots and lots of practice. I strength train with athletes once a week sometimes because they're doing so much other work. Mm -hmm. Mobility work daily yeah. um, and not intense daily. Some days are intense. Some days are easier. But every single day we'd be working on mobility because 
mobility done properly uh, really attacks the main reason why athletes' performance may decline, uh, which has to do with just uh, poor movement patterns and injury. Dude, 100%. This is, I, if I could go back and, and redo my entire programming of my athletic career, I would place way more emphasis on strength and movement. And in, in terms of like building a, a solid base is, I mean, it's really important to build that foundational strength. And so that has to be, you know, what you really focus on in the very beginning, but also, you know, once you get to that point, it's about how well, how effectively you can move, how explosive you can, you can move and how quickly you can stabilize on command. And you have to have, uh, you know, an even higher level of command over your body and healthy joints to be able to pull that off. And nothing addresses that better than you know, quality mobility practices and really focusing on strengthening uh, your range of motion. This is one of those questions. That this is really hard to answer because th there's such an individual variance, like like many questions that we have to try and answer. Um, and, and you do, you have to really look at wh where your shortcomings are in, as, as an athlete, because if you have a weak gas tank, then you, I would I would have you do more cardio. Um, let's say you're you're carrying an extra, you know, 15, 20 pounds that is not helping us out in your sport. You know, your sport is not a sport used like with leverage, like maybe wrestling or something like that. And then you being an extra 15, 20 pounds overweight, uh, I might have you on the treadmill doing more, more work to burn calories and burn body fat to get you leaner and lighter and work on your endurance because you lack there. If you're somebody who doesn't lack there so much, then it's, it's going to be less emphasis there. Uh, I, I agree. I think with both you on the mobility thing, I don't think anybody can do too much of that. I think that's something that. Uh, we can all be better at, and and I think uh, it's an area that a lot of athletes neglect. Um, but again, still, it, it really depends on how much of a limiting factor that is in your performance of of your sport, and and every sport is very different. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's a it's a tough one uh, to answer. Now, if you're just a person who uh, considers themselves athletic because they like to go pick a ball up every once in a while and play a sport, or they do athletic things, but then they also want to build muscle. Then I also have you know different advice for you. Like you, you have to understand there's going to be a give and take in everything. If your my sport is the number one focus, then like Sal alluded to, I might be only training you one day a week uh, in weight training because most of the time it's going to be geared around getting you better at your sport and and your skill. Uh, but if you're somebody who's just like, hey, I, I want to be an athletic person, but I also want to build a physique, well, then I might have you training two to three days a week yeah. in, when weightlifting with, you know, intermittently using cardio and using different drills to keep you athletic and mobile. And mobility is the one thing probably that we all would say in common of that just needs to be in there on, on a regular basis. For splorts. Splort. <laughs> Next question is from Tanner Sorrells. What was each of your biggest client pet peeves when you all were training. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. picked this. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I got one off the top of my head. Uh, I, used to, I used to hate having to um, explain or, or debate fads, fitness and health fads constantly. So, <laughs> oh, like, Lord. I'd be training a client for a year, two years, three years. You know, they've learned a lot. We've gotten real far. They've gotten great progress. Yeah. And then they'd come in and be like, hey, my friend lost just lost thirty pounds. She did this uh, HCG diet. Yeah, have you heard of it? And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Let me look it up. And I look it up. I'm like, all right, here's why it's not good. But uh, but she looks really good. How did she lose that weight? I'm like, well, it's you know four hundred calories a day. It's not has nothing to do with this HCG that they're injecting. And I'd have to have these discussions and debates. And I would get annoyed because I'd almost it's almost like you're you want to tell your client like you should know better. Yeah, you know, I've mean, been talking to you about this for three years. Now you're coming to bring me, but that was one of my pet peeves. But I always, I always tried to stay patient and calm because there's so much bad information out there that you know a big part of your job as a trainer is just helping them sift through the crap and find the good stuff. You know? Lying to me, that was like my number one pet peeve. You know how many Cleveland clients lie? They told you you're a good trainer. <laughs> yeah, you that was, liar. That was, a big, that was the biggest lie for sure. Uh, <laughs> you lie. No, I mean they do. Uh, when they track their food and stuff. Yeah, oh, food tracking or telling you that like, if I like you know uh, or you know ones where I try to get somebody to stop doing cardio and you know I would sneak around your. Back. Oh yeah, they would. I mm -hmm. I'd catch them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I catch them doing things. I'd be like, what did I tell you? You know, and th and then we wonder why things aren't going to according to plan. The other pet peeve of mine too, I and this is my own shit that I struggle with, is because unfortunately I I just don't have this thing. This is one of the one of the uh, attributes that Sal has that I wish I had is that large penis. 
<laughs> oh my God! You just <laughs> hit him, him out the park today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We we would notice because uh, you were in shorts. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No pants today. Yeah. Uh, no, I I don't have a I don't have a photographic memory, mm-hmm. and I am the worst. Like I I will read a study two or three times, and it will take me at least four or five times trying to explain it before I think I can explain it really well. Um, and so when I would get you know, challenged in something that I know I know I'm right. Like I know that I have the right information, but then I couldn't articulate it really mm-hmm. well. And I know that you, Sal can't relate to this because he doesn't. He is the opposite, mm-hmm. right? He's really good at this. Probably what made him really good as a trainer is that you could probably someone could question him on what he's doing, and then he could break down the study to support it. I, on their hand, read the same studies but couldn't regurgitate yeah. it. <laughs> so it was more like, just trust me, God I knew damn it. Apply so, it. Yeah. So that was a pet peeve. It, it, it would frustrate me when you would you would hire me as a professional, and, and then I lacked the ability to. Uh, again, again, I know it's my own shit, right? It's not like I, it's a mad at the, the the client, but it was a, a frustration, right, or a pet peeve of mine mm-hmm. of like having to like prove. That I knew that I was talking about. It's like I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this uh, if I if I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, so that drove me crazy. Spending yeah, a lot of time doing that. One of my biggest pet peeves was when I would take all of the time in the world to explain like exactly why I was programming the way I was programming and going through all these steps and uh, you know trust the process and all that stuff. And I find out later like they signed up for all these extra classes that yeah. they were doing uh, uh, besides our, our sessions. And it was just like, it was always never enough, uh, which is a, a battle that I was constantly having with, with clients. And then uh, you know, inevitably we get to a point where they, they realize they're just spinning their wheels and because I would have other people listen that would get gain progress, and then we'd have that conversation again. It'd come up, but yeah, they used to just be so frustrating to me because it's. I mean, it just feel like it. It feels like doing more is always going to push you forward. But yeah, like it's always better. It's just always better, and that's that's a hard argument to to uh, unravel, you know, and, and show somebody that they're wrong. Yeah, so. here's here's another one. Um, when I would go out to eat with a client, which wasn't super common, I did maintain a, a, a you know professional line, but uh, you know, after you train people five, six, seven years, you know, they'd ask you to you know, go to lunch or come over meet my family, and you do it, and you would see them change their their like eating behaviors, but just because you're there, you know, like oh. I'll make sure we go somewhere healthy. And I'm like, man, I'm just a regular person like you are. Yeah. And I train you. I've been training you for years. Like, it's not a big deal. You eat milkshakes? Yeah, you could have, like, yeah, you have a, glass, a glass of wine and we can have pizza. Not Or you ever run into a client at the grocery store? It's happened, it's happened to me a couple of times where I see a client with, a, with their cart and then they see, they see me, don't know that I saw that they saw me, and then they turn around real quick. <laughs> leave the, the cart, cart. Leave yeah. the cart. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's all like frozen it's food. so embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. like it's I like, don't know whose this was. Oh. Yeah. It's so weird. Just Thought jumped, it was mine. It just it was jumped totally in here mine. off the yeah. racks. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you, I'm, I mean, trainers are regular people too, and it, you're more effective when you the person is honest with you and then you can work together. And I think sometimes- as a trainer, I might have made people feel like they couldn't be totally honest. That was, that's on me. It's, I can, you know, following along your, your lines, Adam. That was <laughs> yeah. on me. Pretty much. I mean, I think I think that's important to to note, right? With any pet peeves, frustrations, uh, we're sharing them and having fun with them. But mm-hmm. I, I'm also a, a person who uh, totally believes that it's a mirror of ourselves, right? So yeah. if I'm frustrated with anybody, and I stand by that. If I'm mad at another person or frustrated, and if, if I'm emotionally charged or irritated about anything that really isn't about the other person. It's really a reflection of myself. Um, so right. yeah, we're having fun with these pet peeves yeah. and all. But oh yeah, I, like I could have communicated way better and would have absolved all of that. Right. So. Yeah. Now look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so you can actually watch and listen to Mind Pump also on YouTube. Uh, so it's the Mind Pump podcast. Go check it out. On there, we actually break up the episode with questions, so you don't have to listen to the whole thing. And they're easy to share, of course. So you can check us out there as well. Um, Also, if you want to find us um, and talk to us, you can find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 